broadcast this call. <gasps> That's right. I'm broadcasting it. And we are live at the moment. I'm about to go on to social media to post a link if you have stumbled on us on accident. Good job. <laughs> if not, we'll see people in just a second. Here we go. The warning's true. You're it broadcasting. Is. Her uh, computer gave her a warning that I might be recording or broadcasting this. I am. For the record, I told her I was going to, so. <laughs> this is true. Can't this get in trouble true. for that, right? <laughs> I don't, well, actually, you can get in trouble for a lot of things, Sarah. We're just not sure exactly what. It's all right. I, I could handle prison. <laughs> I'm tough. <laughs> no, I'm really Only not. Only if you've had the past spell. Yeah. Oh, man. I feel like that's what I have right now. <laughs> All right. Okay. I posted the link on social media. So hopefully we'll start seeing people come over. Okay. I'm watching uh, the comments in live time, um, you know, live streamed, but we're not seeing any yet, but I think it's because people haven't actually popped over. So. Right. Let me see if I can find your, oh, there we go. Maybe. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Oh, nope, that wasn't it. <laughs> Sarah, where are you? So which, which one did you put it on? Um, I put it on my Instagram, and then it cross-posted to my author page. In fact, I ought to share from my author page to my um, actual Person. human being page. <laughs> you are an actual human being, even though you may not feel like it right now. <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually am. All you right, are. let me share this. I'm sure this is riveting Facebook Live right now. Okay, oh, Mara it. Harvey is here and she says hi. <laughs> it's working. Um, we are Aww, currently sharing links on social media, which is why this is such an exciting moment <laughs> in everyone's life. It is very good. All right. Oops. Apparently I didn't need to do that. Shh. I know how to use computer. What went wrong, Sarah? This so, bad. because this wasn't um, streamed live on here, I will tell you how very, very exciting it has been. Um, I <laughs> attempted to start this live stream and then got a notice. Your channel is not set up to live stream. <laughs> like, oh, because I'm supposed to be doing it right now. <laughs> So I got to argue with um, my computer and <laughs> finally got it done. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm attempting to share this post and it's not working. Are you having the same problem, Tracy? It's now working. I, it's on my page now. Oh my goodness. Okay, Mara is asking if I'm still in isolation in my home. I am. Um, we had a reevaluation on Thursday and it was determined that I need to extend my isolation by 14 more days. So th two more weeks of insanity, my environs <laughs> for two more weeks. Well, I'm down to 12 and a half days at this point. Not that I'm counting down, but when oh we have gosh. the hourly and minute countdown, I'm going to start like, we're going to start cheering. That's right. <laughs> Live stream that. <laughs> oh my God, you should. Just that standing like at the door. Movie. Do you remember that old Mervyn's commercial? Mervyn's, man, I'm dating myself. The old Mervyn's commercial oh where they're getting ready for their annual sale. And the lady standing outside the door is going, open, open, open. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's going to be me <laughs> when I'm allowed uh, to get yeah. out of this room. I, I, I'm really worried about, like, I'm willing to come break you up, about, <laughs> but I really... The doctor, you know, I, I love you. I want you to stay healthy. So it's, it's, been a, it's been a challenge. Right. Well, that's my family, too. They're like, yeah, it'd be nice if you were out of there, but we also don't want you to be sick. So oh, well, yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah, this oh is true. Gosh. All right. Cindy uh, Johnson has joined on. Um, she says that she's glad we're doing this. She was disappointed that she couldn't get tickets to the tea that was supposed to be at the library today. So a live tea party is a great idea. So that was my thought, too. That it would be fun yes. to hang out, and um, but it's a lot more fun for you to hang out with me and other people than <laughs> to hang out with just me. So <laughs> this is what we're doing. I don't know, Sarah. You by yourself is still pretty fun, even though, like, probably my favorite time was when we actually put you 
in the parking for the stroller <laughs> in Helsinki. Yes. So we had stroller parking and Sarah was in a wheelchair. So, you know, we just had to kind of roll her right over there. And right. she did we a parked great job imitating. Amongst yes, the baby trolleys. <laughs> the um, baby trolleys were there. Um, Tracy and I, and two of our very good um, author friends, Annette Lyon and Jeanette Rallison, have traveled a lot together. And this was one of the highlights of our trip to Helsinki a couple of years ago. I was uh, in a wheelchair. It's the same problem that I just had surgery for. So this has been ongoing for almost two years now. Um, and so I was in a chair the whole time, and Tracy pushed me all over the streets of <laughs> Helsinki. But yeah, at one point we went into a museum, and they parked me with the uh, baby strollers. Because <laughs> it was a great photo op. They didn't leave me there, but it was really pretty funny. Yes, it was It was comical. Although I still remember the, wor the only wrong turn we took the entire trip was up the steepest hill ever. And yes. it was like, don't... It's like we go up and get right to the top, and I'm literally like leaning sideways to push Sarah up the hill, and then that's like, oh, whoops, this isn't where we're going, and we have to go, <laughs> go all, back all the down. way down. And so on the oh, way yeah. down, I'm leaning back in the chair, holding on for dear life, because it was so steep. And I think we were both laughing hysterically. Any onlookers we, probably thought we were drunk. Harder. <laughs> we got some weird looks. Yeah, we did. But we're used to that. <laughs> we get a lot we of are. looks. Although the best is when traveling in Dublin with you and people ask Sarah <laughs> how, for direct because she looks like she belongs there, which of course she does. I mean, who else is born on St. Patrick's Day and has the cute <laughs> little red hair and Irish background? Right. And she knows how to tell them how to get places. They don't. They can't quite figure out how she has an American accent. Right. But that's she, the she gives funniest the moment. The, if someone, yes. like, when someone lean out their car window, do you remember that? And asked me how to get to St. Patrick's Cathedral. So I said, well, you're going to go left at the next light. Two lights down, it'll be on your left. You can't miss it. And the look on their face as I start talking, and I'm clearly an American. And then to realize I do actually know how to tell them how to get <laughs> where they're going. I was like, guys, I enjoy shocking people, apparently. But, oh, my gosh. Oh, you do it fun. instinctively. You don't even have to try. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay, I'm just making sure I haven't missed any questions that have come through. We have um, a good number of people who've joined us now. Hopefully more people will hear about it and hop on. Um, we haven't decided how long this is going to go, so whenever we run out of things to say or, I don't know, you guys people get tired of listening. <laughs> we watch the numbers drop. <laughs> There's no one here anymore. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And if you guys enjoyed doing this, this is the kind of thing that would be easy to pop up again. Um, Tracy and I know a lot of people. <laughs> we could turn it into a party. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, um, I've mentioned, and most of you probably already know, Tracy is an author. She's an amazing author. She writes suspense. She writes great romance. But in case you aren't super familiar with her, Tracy, tell us what your most recent release was. I know it's very recently. Oh, yes. So Royal Royal Air just came out this past, like a couple weeks ago. And it's it's actually, technically, it's the fourth book in my Royal series. But it's, um, it's the beginning, really, of a new section of it. So it's like, it's set in a fictional country in the Mediterranean, because, you know, how much fun is it to create princesses and you know, fantasy and all that stuff. Uh -huh. And I'm Sarah. Sarah is like amazing at research when she does her books. I'm like, I like to go and experience places and then just make everything up. So I'm more <laughs> the fairy tale person for real. Where Sarah's like, yes. she makes it. I mean, I can make it look believable, but you know, okay. I mean, if there's not a castle where I want one, I'm going to build it. So. <laughs> you are resourceful. Let no one say yeah. otherwise. <laughs> Well, and, and it's, the fun thing is Sarah and I find that we, we actually share a lot of readers, which is interesting because Sarah writes primarily Regency romance, but I think a lot of it is because everything we both write is very family friendly. Like it's something that you could share with your grandparents, you can share with your kids. Mm -hmm. Like it's, we love the, our romance and everything, but it's still a lot of fun that everyone can enjoy. So right. I think that's... You know, one of the reasons why we can have a we tea overlap. party together and be like, right. hey, people are like, oh my gosh, I love both of them. We're going, how, like, I'm writing, <laughs> I'm blowing things up. And Sarah's like, in the 1700s. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They blew well. things up in the 1700s. <laughs> okay. The yeah, American Revolution, ever heard yeah. of it? 
<laughs> this is oh what happens God. when I get together with authors I know really well. It descends into silliness very quickly, so everyone brace yourselves. Yeah. Uh, and Tracy, I know you can't see the comments, so I'm just going to toss them out to you. Marissa says she read The Royal Air and she loved it. Cindy says she Aww. loves the royal books. Um, Marissa says she is now reading all of the royal books. She's the one that read Lo Royal Air and really enjoyed it. So you're getting lots of I love your books out in the comments. So okay, well, thank you, everybody. So I don't know if everyone knows this, but we, they had – we both um, published, I published through Covenant Communications, and Sarah, that's one of her publishers, because Sarah, you know, she has to, she writes so much, she needs more than one. That's right. But, um, <laughs> one one yeah. company can't handle Special. me. <laughs> They're like, please, so, we can't work with her more than we already are. Send her somewhere else. <laughs> actually, it's more like, come on, Sarah, give us more, give us more. <laughs> so they did the first ever reader's choice and Sarah like won almost everything. It was awesome. She won like, I don't know, like four. Anyway, she won a lot. It was pretty cool. <laughs> so she got the love. Yes, that's right. She won the dance. And this wasn't a, we feel sorry for Sarah because she just had surgery. This was like, no, she's just awesome. <laughs> well, there might've been some of both. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll take pity votes. So. I'm not picky. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, and Tracy, you are getting a greeting from your grandson. <laughs> oh. In the comments, the grandson of the saintly woman on the right is watching in utter fascination. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Oh, I love it. You've got family tuned That's in. That's too fun. fun. Awesome. Yeah, actually, my grandson is not far from where you are. I was supposed to be coming out to visit him at the end of the month. Oh. Or actually, no, I take it back next month, and now we're not sure if it'll happen because right. they canceled by you graduation mm -hmm. so i was supposed to actually go to sarajevo on wednesday and that's not going to happen <laughs> yeah things are very up in the air oh oh well <laughs> all right well i'm getting a question here from sydney she's asking me was it hard to come up with three different author voices for lady and the highwayman you're meaning my voice is the author of the main book Walker's voice in his Penny Dreadful and then Mr. King's voice in that Penny Dreadful. Yes, <laughs> it really, really was. It was a level of characterization I've never had to do where you step back and say, okay, based on what I know of this character and the time period in which they lived, what would their author voice sound like? <laughs> Have you ever had to ask yourself that about a character, Tracy? No, it's oh my gosh. so well, weird. It's not her author voice. <laughs> right? So as I'm just like, what would it sound like normally? Exactly. And so you have to figure that out anyway. But yeah, I'd sit back to write a chapter of one of the Penny Dreadfuls and think, oh, no, wait, how would that character write this story? <laughs> so it was this weird degree of separation. So Sydney, yes, that was hard. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but it was hard. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But it worked. You totally, you totally pulled it off. Well, I haven't had um, more complaints than I get with any of my books, so <laughs> it must not have been awful. I just don't understand how you get complaints. I don't get I it. Get so many. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Oh, Cindy Johnson is asking, what new books do we, you and I, have coming out in the near future? So what is next on your docket, Tracy? Okay, so my next one is, let me think of the title because it's changed. A Change of Fortune. Stop. Okay. Don't. Sorry. Didn't mean to make you laugh. <laughs> with, um, with something in my mouth. Yeah. This could get really dangerous. I, it was well timed. So A Change of Fortune is a contemporary romance coming out in June. And then awesome. I have On the Run is coming out in October, which is another Guardian novel. Fantastic. So those are my next. And I know you, you have two more coming up this I year do. too, right? Um, I have uh, Forget Me Not. It's a Georgian era romance. So that means late 1700s, featuring the parents of the Jonquil brothers. If you've read that series, their love story is coming out in September. And I'm That's so excited awesome. about that. And then in November, I have um, the next installment in the um, Lady and the Highwayman universe. Um, and that one is called The Gentleman and the Thief. So that one comes out in November. So those are my next two. Awesome. Yeah. You're going to have a very busy fall. Yes. <laughs> well, especially because if all of this has been lifted by then and everyone literally pray that we will have passed the worst of it by then, I think people will be so anxious to get out and do things that we're going to want to do a lot of stuff. So it could be very, very oh, yeah. busy. <laughs> all right. And I saw a question I missed as it went flew past. Uh, Mara's asking how my foot recuperation is going, especially since 
uh, you know, I'm isolated and everyone's quarantined. Um, currently, my physical therapy can't be done. So that, of course, is setting some things back. They have me doing some things at home. So I'm still making progress, but it's going slower than it would otherwise. Um, but it, it, again, you can tell I'm very Irish. This is one of my Irish ancestors slash family's favorite sayings. It, it is what it is. You know, you, you can't change it. So you just keep going. But so yeah, that's slowing it down and frustrating it a little, but it is still moving forward like it should just a whole lot slower. So, oh, well. All right. Amy is asking Tracy, what is the favorite book or series that you've written? I think she means like your favorite, if you have one. <laughs> I don't know if I have one. Such a hard question, think, huh? Actually, okay. I have to say right now, probably one of my favorites would be, um, it's one of the guardians. It's the on the run because Sarah, you lived this one with me. I took, when, when we went, met in Helsinki, I had gone through the Baltic States and I popped into Paris for a couple of days because my daughter was doing a study abroad. So the characters actually followed the path that I took <laughs> on our trip. So it was, it was just a lot of fun because like all the places that I normally am having to do more research on some of my locations just because I haven't been there that recently or I haven't been in the right season or whatever. And this one literally was like following where we were, but it was really funny because as I got to one of the climax scenes, I was actually talking to Annette and I said, all oh, right, I, I'm trying to figure out how not to blow up any, any national monuments. And it was really a <laughs> challenge. Like, right. I was like, I don't, I don't want to blow anything up that I really liked. And I, You'll have to read it to find out if I was successful or not. But anyway, it was it was a challenge. It was That's quite the so challenge. Funny. And and shout out to Annette because she actually was helping me figure out how to pronounce these words. Yes, that I oh can't. my gosh. Why do you use street names in the book? I don't know. Because, I mean, I have to do an audio guide for the person right. who reads the book. <laughs> what was I thinking? Oh my but gosh. Anyway. Well, one of my books is set in Wales. And so there so, are Welsh names and location awesome. names in for that book, for my audio guide, oh. I just said, please call Sean Bessie. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how to say it. Sean Bessie is our friend, and she uh -huh. is awesome when it comes to that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And actually, and I, lo I, I love, the royal books are also one of my, I love, you know, it's that fairy tale princess thing. That's always so much fun. So. Right, right. But so awesome. what, do you have a favorite, or is this one of those, it's like asking who your favorite child is. Exactly, today. exactly. When I almost always say... My favorite book is whichever one I'm currently drafting. Because in the drafting stage, it's still exciting yeah. and you still love it. And usually my least right. favorite is whatever I just finished editing. Because by the time you finish the nitty-gritty edits, you hate it. <laughs> and I found that holds pretty <laughs> true. <laughs> I love it right after proofing. And, that, and On the Run was like the last one I proofread. Mm -hmm. And so it's like it's all pretty and polished. Yes, exactly. And I've seen it for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And you know it's as, it's the best it's ever been and the best it will, will ever be. So you're ever like, there we go. Be. And you no longer have to work on it, which sounds, I don't know if that's quite the right way to put it. There's also that feeling of relief, like, okay, it's complete. I've finished it. So there's also that feeling that goes along with the final proof. Well, and I don't know if you're this way, but one of the main reasons I went tried to pursue publication is because I felt like if I didn't publish it, I would never finish a book. Oh, like, absolutely. You're always fixing it and tweaking it and changing something. Right. So that's I, why my books were published. I heard a quote once, and I wish I could remember who it was, but they said, an author never finishes a book, he just abandons it. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> what it is. Cause like yeah. you said, if there weren't a point in time where it was deemed finished, we would just keep working on it. Yes. We just would. All right, Lauren is asking you, who is the main character of the next Saint Squad story? Okay, so this one is kind of different. It's actually, this is my, oh, I, the dog's there. Yes, he's the only the um, living thing allowed in this room. So he keeps oh me company. <laughs> well, and he's having a great time behind you. I believe so, it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... And for the next Saint Squad book, it actually was my son's friend, uh, my son's idea. He was he um, asked me to write a book from based off of lockdown. It was the kid who was actually um, like the victim. It was like a fifteen-year-old boy in the book at the time, and so he is the main character. But then the, the rest of the Saint Squad is in there as well. So, <clears throat> I mean, one of the lines that my my son came up with, he goes. One one Saint Squad member says to the other, um, "Aren't you glad you didn't kill him when you shot him?" <laughs> so, 
so anyway, it was it was kind of, so lockdown is the one it's spinning off of. So that was only Very the second cool. book in the series. So so yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, it, I just submitted it. So but it's been cleared by the CIA. So nice. it's actually our editor's hands, which by the way, if you guys don't know, Sarah and I actually share an editor. So and she's amazing. Course, Shout out to Sam. <laughs> Yeah, Samantha Mil Milburn. In fact, she, she was doing the last edits for me. I think the last two books she edited in the hospital. So Yeah. Was, <laughs> this is who she is. Like, she's got to be one of the hardest working people I know. And she's yeah. very good at what she does. So that's a great combination oh, yeah. for us. Because oh, I have yeah. to tell her she makes me look like a much better writer than I actually am. <laughs> oh, me too. So, yeah, everything that looks fan fantastic, like, Every word we get, we're thank you to yes, our editors. I mean, exactly. Of course, don't you also have Lisa Mangum? Lisa right? Mangum over at Shadow, Shadow Mountain. Mountain, and Annette Lyon is my editor at Mirror Press. Oh. So yeah, I've got three just absolutely stellar. Um, they editors. are all amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty great. Okay, and uh, Mara is asking you. You said a little while back that you had just gone over proofs on a book. Yeah, and Mara wants to know which book that was. So that one was on the run. So it, this was kind of. Again, last year I wrote and submitted like three books in really short order. Um, like probably within like three month period, I submitted three books because I've been writing them over the past six months. Well, then because I did that, all of the edits came back at almost the same time. So I would get edit one and then um, I would kind of, all right, it's off my plate. It's back to my editor. And then the proofs would come back and then I would get, I'd get that done. And then the edit for the other one would come. So it was all just a, a big old mess. I it's felt sorry for our editor. But. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. On the run I just got. And then I think it was like only about a, maybe two months ago, I did a change of fortune. So those are all hopefully in the pipeline because who yeah. knows what. Right. Shut down. Exactly. And that's something I've had people ask, um, how the anticipated economic impact of this pandemic is going to affect the book industry. And it's really too early to tell at this point. Um, the, the closest reference we have is 2008 when we had um, some pretty significant economic issues in this country. And while we saw a little bit of a slowdown in the book industry, it didn't disappear. So I'm not anticipating right. it suddenly just dissolving into nothing, but um, like Tracy was saying, it's kind of hard to know how that might impact release schedules and how it might change the way books are released and the formats and all of that. But so I know at least for me, I'm not desperately worried about it, but I do anticipate that things are going to change. We just don't know what they're going to be yet. Like most of the world, we don't know how things are going to change in the next little while. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and, and also in 2008, there wasn't as much self-publishing and things like that. Exactly. So back mm -hmm. then, and that's where a lot of it boomed out because, right. um, they mm -hmm. slowed down the production for a lot of books. We were, exactly. Sarah and I were both lucky that, I, actually, you were, were you already with Covenant at that point? No, I came in, my first book was published with them in 2010. Gotcha. Or 2000, yeah, I think it was 2010. So 10 years ago. Whew. So I came in wow. just a little bit after that had happened. Yeah. So I hadn't had to write out a wave like this before. But back then, like you're saying, we didn't have quite the same mechanisms we do now. Um, Ebooks are so huge now, and that reduces the production costs and production times. Um, digital audiobooks are growing, and that, again, is something that um, doesn't depend on a distribution pipeline in quite the same way. So we may just see some adjustments in the formats we see and yeah. how they get delivered. So, yeah, Or well, it'll just be us on the computer like this going, let me just tell you a story because <laughs> I can't get it published. Well, and the the truth is, though, that when you're dealing with everyone shut down, it's like, what are you doing? You can only watch so much TV. So all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my gosh. Exactly. Let me escape from my reality for a minute and not let me worry about somebody blowing something up right. or, you know, yep. having a gun hidden in some place or whatever it is. So, exactly. Or just, you know, a great romance. It's just, just something different than the reality um, you're living. So I fully anticipate we're still going to have plenty of books and plenty of things. They may just come through slightly different methods we may have to change the way in which we approach it but i think we're going to survive <laughs> how's well, that for <laughs> optimism <laughs> and really right now we're we're living history this is a yeah. this is a time when people will this is going to be in the history books Absolutely. so write write in your journals everyone like remember how <laughs> right i was talking to my mom the other day and she said man this this is like journal worthy and i said yeah it makes me wish i had a journal <laughs> 
she was like, Sarah! We need to send you one. <laughs> Sarah's <laughs> latest you know. entry from isolation. <laughs> it just gets more and more gibberishy. Day 28. <laughs> As oh long as you can keep, keep the English language alive, That's you can right. do it. Uh, Mara is saying she's enjoying my daily readings of the uh, Penny Dreadful. I don't know if you have come across this yet, Tracy. Yes. Every day I've posted a chapter from an actual Penny Dreadful that was published in the 1840s. Um, and it's been so much fun because I think a lot of people, until they read Lady and the Highwayman, weren't really familiar with the Penny Dreadfuls. They may have heard a few stories that came out of that, like Sweeney Todd was a Penny Dreadful, um, Portrait of Dorian, whatever his last name is. <laughs> <laughs> was it Penny Dreadful, guys? <sighs> um, vampire stories really got their kind of their big start in the Penny Dreadfuls. Barney the Vampire is one of the most well known from then, but most people had never read one. So I went and grabbed what was the best selling, most widely read work of fiction in all of Victorian England, which was a Penny Dreadful, and I'm reading it a chapter at a time. So I haven't read this one before, so I don't know what's going on. But I record the chapters a day early. So I know now what's happening in tomorrow's chapter, and it's so hard not to, like, tell people and want to talk about it. These were, someone had said on one of my social media posts that these are like the soap operas of the Victorian era, and that's the best description yeah. I've ever heard, because that's exactly what they were. So it's yeah. a lot of fun. Okay, I'm just going to scroll back. Um, people saying that they enjoyed Lady and the Highwayman, which I appreciate. Uh, Mara says she doesn't know how anyone could complain about either of our books <laughs> because they're amazing. So, like you, I said, Mara. we love Mara. That's right. She's our best friend now. <laughs> yeah. um, tip the teacup to Mara. <laughs> There we go. Oh, I don't even know where mine is. <laughs> and I should tell you, I am um, enjoying some lemonade <laughs> in my teacup because that's what sounds oh, good. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'm sitting with the water. I can't help it. I'm um, a water girl. Let's see. Becky is asking, when is Charlie Jonquil's story coming out? Um, again, things are kind of uncertain right now in the publishing world. So beyond what's already scheduled and already in the pipeline, we kind of are all kind of waiting to see what happens. Um, I am currently writing Charlie's story. If I get it done in time, turned in in time, accepted in time, put into the schedule, and everything holds solid, soon. <laughs> Staff for still not giving an answer. My hope is it could come out next year. We will see. So everyone hold your breath. Uh, Lauren wants to know, um, do either of us have family members who help us come up with ideas for books? I know you had mentioned your son suggested the hero of your upcoming book. Does that happen more generally or is that an unusual thing for you that was more unusual like actually I probably get more uh, suggestions from readers who mm -hmm. like for example the royal book royal air that's the fourth in this series but royal target was intended to be a standalone but oh, so many people gave me these great you know were so kind to email me and say hey you know I love the book and everything when's the next one I was like the next one like what <laughs> next one oh. And I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> well, that's like four years because I didn't plan on writing another one. But exactly. enough people asked that I finally did it. And the same thing happened with the Saint Squad novels. It was supposed to be a five book series. Well, we're going on book 11 because he was like, <laughs> don't let it stop. I was like, keep going. Okay. That's so funny. So, well, like Charlie's book, my next one will be, obviously he's the youngest of the brothers in that family. So he technically wraps up that main series. But like you, I have so many people saying, well, what about this character? And what about this brother-in-law? And what right. about this friend? And what about the kids of the family? <laughs> so same thing. I have a feeling it's just going to keep going and going and going, which I love. Um, but yeah, you right. kind of don't expect it. You hope people will enjoy the books. But when they're enthusiastic about them, it's like the most pleasant surprise <laughs> ever. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, man. All right. Okay. I have another question for you from Debbie. She says, Tracy, will what we're going through right now, all this stuff, be a good base for a book in the future, do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, I, I was really disappointed because I was hoping that I would still be able to pull off going to Europe next week. And right. obviously, under the circumstances, I mean, we actually canceled it a, a week or two ago. But right, um, right now, there's nobody in the world who has not been affected by this, you right. know, like whether it's graduation that's being canceled, like my son's lacrosse season's probably going to get canceled. Mm -hmm. He's his, his concern. He doesn't care about graduation. He wants to go to prom. Um, right. But, but all of us are have, you know, like, you know, the trip that didn't happen for me to Sarajevo, um, 
everyone has something that they had planned to do, that somebody they'd planned to see, something they wanted to, to have happen that isn't going to happen the way right. they intend, you know, intended. So like I said, it, we're making history. It's just a matter of how is that going to filter through and also doing it in a way where it's not like, I remember this in a negative way. It's like right. showing that uh, there's actually a story that story idea I've had going on for a long time and it didn't quite have the last, how would I make this plausible? Well, today it's plausible. I finally right. figured out the last piece of this story that I've been wanting to write. Isn't and now so I'm like, interesting. okay. So you just don't, you don't know what, you know, the daily news are, is going to do to you, but that's one of my storyline go-tos is what's happening around the world. Exactly. I have a story um, that I've been working on for a few years now and um, nowhere near ready to come out. So <laughs> just saying, <laughs> um, but it takes place at the time of World War I. And so as part of that, I had done a lot of studying of the 1918 pandemic because it's the nature of pandemics. They're so huge. They're so disruptive to lives, to economies, to the movements of people that they have the ability to stop wars, which is what the 1918 pandemic did. It brought the world to its knees to a degree that it ended World War I. So, I mean, they're huge, right? They're enormous. And I've studied that and I thought, you know, I'm gonna have to do a lot of studying on this so I can understand how it feels to be in the middle of a pandemic. And now I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have had that thought. I feel like I <laughs> missed the opportunity to knock on wood somewhere because this is not how I wanted to learn more about that. Yeah, but yeah, like you said, we're living through things that generations from now they will read about and read about the ways we responded to them, the positives that came through them, the negatives, the the people who rose to the occasion, and those who you know, the, and failures of leadership, and all the things we read about whenever we look back on previous events and evaluate them with that hindsight that we don't have while we're in the middle of them. Well, and just like you know, many people have said, if it's like reacting but if we feel like we're overreacting we actually are being successful it's exactly. when we didn't when we feel like everything is fine it's when the problems happen so you know those of us who have studied a lot of this history we recognize exactly the wisdom in a lot of these decisions mm -hmm. but um yep. you know and just just the also just how how kind so, so many people are in um just some of the basic things i mean like i didn't even think about it but i came home one after, you know, probably my last trip to the grocery store <laughs> and I'd gone to try to go to one store to get something. It was like bananas or something, but they were sold out at the first store, but they were also completely sold out of every type of bread, like completely right. gone. So I go to the store across the street and I find whatever the bananas or like I said, I can't remember exactly what was on the list that day. And, um, and so I go, I'm like, well, I should go and we're down to like two loaves of bread. I've got two teenage boys at home. Oh it's, man. You know, they're uh -huh. teenage. Yeah. I've got two teenagers so at home when, too. <laughs> like yeah. a year so supply you know isn't what it used to be. <laughs> no. So I go in and it's like the bread, there's bread there, but it's kind of picked over. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I have two loaves at home. I know how to make rolls and bread and stuff. Exactly. So I'm just. I'll just not get that. I'm just going to get the things that I really needed that I, you know, would, would be disruptive in my regular, you know, diet and everything. Exactly. And so sure enough, um, I told the boys, I said, well, when dad's, my husband uh, works for the government. So he had to go to work for a couple of days last week. And he's, he goes, when he leaves, because he's not really eating breads right now. And I said, all right, as soon as dad goes to work, I'll make rolls. <laughs> And so, so you don't torture so him there, with your <laughs> with right. your bread. <laughs> so like, then I'll put them in the and I'll put them in the freezer so they have them. They can just you know pull them out and heat them up and exactly. everything. So I did that, and and I and I was telling um, my my oldest son. I said, hey, in fact, I th posted about this. I said, now be careful. How, you know, be consistent or considerate of how you're eating because like they're going through like the Costco pizzas like crazy. Uh -huh. I said because when they're done, they're gone. I'm not gonna. I don't know what ingredients we'll have, you know, to make exactly. whatever you want. And so his response was, right, eat all the bread so you have to make lots and lots of rolls. <laughs> is that a tea no, boy or what? Meant. Oh, it is. Okay. It is. So. It is. And I have to tell you, watching Jimmy Fallon attempt to do The Tonight Show from his house with his two little girls has done my heart so much good. Because I feel like it's testament to all of us that things are chaotic and the kids aren't always cooperative yeah. and that's okay. <laughs> so, so I tell myself, yeah. it's all right. 
It's all right. Okay, you've got a few more questions over here. I'm going to pop over to you. Um, Becky is asking, are you writing a story for Jim and Catherine Whitmore? They are actually in one of the books I just turned in. Um, it'll probably be a year from now, but it's another Guardian book. So, um, And then they actually are also in the Saint Squad book. So they're, they're, they're moving. They're moving forward in like this little presidential campaign Jim's got going. So, so I'm thinking probably spring and fall, but awesome. they're both turned in. Woo All right. Marissa so. had said she would love a story about the Whitmores, so she will be happy too. <laughs> Stephanie is asking awesome. me, can we get more information on Mr. Handel? Not Crispin, but Mr. Handel, who appears in Romancing Daphne. And unfortunately... The answer I have to give you is no, <laughs> because information about him plays a role in a book I haven't published yet. So you will eventually, is what I should say. I just can't give it to you now. How's top that for mysterious? <laughs> there, Sarah. Right. I have a top secret stamp. Want me to send it? Yes. <laughs> I need to get that for you. With the reading. That's right. So everyone knows. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Um, so a question I had written down, you and I have done a lot of traveling together, um, and you've done a lot of traveling on your own, I've done some traveling on my own, but when all of this has calmed down and you know, the world is open again, where would you like to go next? If you could you know, travel well, you know, wherever because we don't have a pandemic going on. <laughs> okay, so the Balkan states were supposed to be in my next plans, so, um, so I wanted to do Belgrade and Sarajevo were supposed to be where I was going to be going. But the friend I was going to stay with in Sarajevo is probably going to be back before I will, all of this settles down. So I'm hoping that they can give me some good notes of, you know, things to go see and, and do and things like that. And then I may actually add Croatia in there. Oh, but fun. Sarah, I think you and I, um, we may have Paris in our future. We just because might. Because <laughs> you just, yeah, I. How about you? Where's fa your fairly next? recently reached out to Tracy and said, "So, what do you think of Paris?" <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave that right there. <laughs> Sarah might need to do some research. I'm just saying. Hmm. What's your Which, appetite? By the way, this whole travel together thing started with exactly that type of phone call. Sarah, I have a free ticket. Want to go to Ireland? And that's how it started. Right. And I was like, do you have to ask? I will always go to Ireland. The last time I was there, I'm going through passport control, you know, where they flip through to stamp it. And um, the passport agent is looking through page after page. And she said, why are you in Ireland so often? <laughs> I'm there with Jolene Perry, who's also a fantastic, amazing author. We took our two girls who are the same age um, with us to Ireland for a trip, and she just died laughing. And I was like, well, I kind of love it here. <laughs> so you know you've been a lot when the passport agent is like, why are you back? <laughs> so, yeah, where would I go next? I'd go to Ireland. I mean, yeah. But there's so many other places I would oh. love to visit all over Europe. It would be absolutely amazing. My husband... um lived in Brazil for a couple of years and he has wanted to go back down there to visit and so that could be really fun. So many things. Um, oh, and, and there was a question that flew past for you, Tracy, so I'm going to back up. Oh, from Lauren. Um, are you saying that there are two more Guardian books coming? Question mark? Yes. Whoa! So I have one on the run is coming out in October and then I have another one that I've submitted that will most likely come out in the spring of 2021. So it's not accepted to Jed. I should find out in a, probably a month or so right. on that one. Right. But and it was fun. So that's something I think um, people don't always know all of the steps in the publication process. So like an author will say, I'm writing this book. And then they'll say, well, when does it come out? And as an author, it's almost a jarring question because we recognize there are still six remaining steps <laughs> before that happens. And <laughs> But yeah, the answer while we're still writing it is, I don't know. It depends on if my publisher even likes it <laughs> because that's one yeah. big major step we have to get past. So, um, <sighs> Stephanie is saying, Sarah, you should totally do one of those cruise tours around the United Kingdom. <laughs> you know, when oh, the my cruise industry is up and going again. What would yes, be fun would be is to do a cruise like you're scheduled to do, Tracy, where you're kind of there as a, I don't know what's the word. Like a guest speaker. Yeah, yeah, like a guest speaker, but around the British Isles. I'd be like, okay, guys, we're in Belfast. Hop off. Here's where you need to go. 
Oh, Guys, we're in Dublin. Do- this is the pub you need to eat at, and this is where you need to go to get pasties, and make sure you go here for fish and chips. <laughs> Why is it all my suggestions are about food? Like, I don't know what that tells me about myself. <laughs> um, well, you have... You did find... Okay, Sarah knows, like, the best place for fish and chips, and it is literally a hole-in-the-wall type of place, but in Dublin, she knows where to go, but yeah, <laughs> we also had to find that Irish breakfast. And, okay, yes. we like food. We can't help it. Yeah. This is... We're foodies. <laughs> foodies, and we're going for what? Fish and chips. <laughs> Real foodies okay. are like, I don't think that counts. <laughs> um, well, we like other stuff, too. It's just... Right, but that's an we're, important we're part. Eclectic. Exactly. Having good we food while you're traveling food. keeps you going. <laughs> that's right. And then we can just throw that into a book on occasion so people know what they need to try. <laughs> Lauren says she would go on that trip <laughs> around, right. around the British Isles. And I say, okay, in this port, you need to go see this. <laughs> Here's the accent you're about to hear. No, you'll understand nothing they're saying. The Belfast oh accent is tough. The Scouse accent out of Liverpool is tough. But they're beautiful and amazing to listen to. But if your ears aren't used to them, it's like, hey, can you spell that for me? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, here's oh, yeah. from Becky. She says, Tracy, my sister just did a crypt- trip to Croatia and other Balkan countries, so you can ask her if you want any info about that area. So, there you go. Ooh, awesome. Yeah, a little uh, resource there. All right, see if I missed anything else up in here. I think we've just about hit it. It's possible I'm missing some because I'm scrolling back through our comments, but all right. Okay, let me see if I have anything else on here that I haven't asked you. Um, what are you working on now? Like, are you drafting anything new right now? I know you have stuff that's recently been turned in. Okay, so I am drafting something right now, but it is completely different than anything I've ever done. <gasps> Ooh. Like, there are, I have to do research. This, is, this has been a challenge. Welcome so, to the dark side, Tracy. I, know. I, I knew you'd be proud. So this one, it's actually the very first book I ever wrote. It was awful. Like, I, it was a great story, but oh my gosh, I was a terrible writer. <laughs> Somebody taught me how to I have some manuscripts like that. So, um, <laughs> I, so I, um, anyway, it's a, it's like an Olympic story. So it's, it's Fun. set back in, back, um, so I guess it was a couple of years ago, we did, um, several of us got together and did like novellas to help raise money for Robinson Wells for some medical Right, bills. right. And that novella that I had contributed was the prequel to the story that I wrote, that I'm writing, writing, working on right now. So I'm hoping that what will happen is it's actually probably going to be two books. Um, and I'm just about, I'm probably a week from finishing the first one. Cool. So then I, I'm thinking maybe I'll just, go, I'm hoping even though I've turned turned two in, I'm kind of turning my books in out of order. This isn't the first time it's happened though. Right. Um, and where this one would become like June of 2021. And then, um, then the next one would be like, right as the Olympics winter Olympics are happening in 2022. So right. that's what the hope is, is that good, this Olympic yeah, story would come out right as the winter Olympics happen. So That'd be awesome. that's, that's what I'm working on now. And then Fabulous. I just, you know, have all these ideas with everything's going on. That's right. All of a sudden, you're like, ooh. I was supposed to be writing a Saint Squad in Sarajevo, but um, or right. Guardians, I hadn't decided yet. But now I'm going to have to see if I get over there and right and see when what and happens. All that, yeah. All right. And I got a yes. question which leads me to answer the same one because I'd ask you what you're working on. Someone, I'm working on Charlie John Quill's story right now. That's what I'm writing. And Stephanie is saying, um, during Charlie's story, you said you cried three times. Were those happy tears or sad tears? <laughs> Good question, right? Um, they're both. The story itself is very, very happy. I promise you guys are going to enjoy it. There's laughter. There's really tender moments. Um, but like most of my books, there are also moments that you know touch your heart and that are tender. But also one of the reasons there's so much emotion with this book for me is because it does close this set of books. You know what I mean? And so there's kind of that feeling of completion in it, which kind of makes you a little bit teary. Last night I was writing a scene in that book that I have been, I've known since Friends and Foes that this scene was going to happen in Charlie's book. And it's very tender and it's emotional. And so I wept like a a baby (laughs) the whole time I was writing it yesterday. It was actually kind of cathartic with everything that's going on. But not because it's a sad scene. It really isn't. It's just that moment of 
seeing things happen that you've been anticipating and you have all these characters together that you've come to love so much and they're all there and there's this feeling of connectedness. So they are happy and sad tears, but not because the book is sad. It isn't. You're going to enjoy it. It's very happy and fun. So there's that. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, um, that takes us to about 45 minutes, which is probably all oh anyone wants to hear from us. <laughs> But this was really fun. I think it could be fun to do again. Maybe Tracy and I can brainstorm some other people we can bring in and turn it into um, a, a yeah. party with three or three or so people and do this now and then because it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having a tea party with me, Sarah. Yes, thank you for joining me in my isolation room. <laughs> you needed somebody in your isolation yeah, room. Yeah, someone other than the dog. Besides the dog. <laughs> And thank you to everyone who came in and watched and commented and participated. This was a lot of fun. Like I said, I'll um, have to see who else I can get to join me and see if Tracy can hop in for a, um, a party again as well. So thanks, everybody. Have a great one. <laughs> Bye.